When we throw a stone in the water, ripples are formed, but after some time, it regains its stability. Similarly, we all are in a transition phase, uncertain about what next, but we need to unfreeze and unlearn to move with this transition stage. In this context, when we are all geared up to implement NET 2020 in our curriculum, need was felt to have an interactive session of all the stakeholders, especially principals and the admission conveners from our colleges for effective implementation of NEP 2020 framework. Accordingly, today's program aims at understanding educational restructuring and supporting each other for rejuvenation of our education ecosystem in our UT. We strongly believe that after 1,15,000 meetings, two committees, and a change after 36 years, it must surely be a big bonanza for all its stakeholders. This program has four interactive sessions after inaugural, and we hope we learn and listen to each other and create a roadmap for effective implementation of NET 2020 in our UT of JNK. To begin with, I must appreciate the efforts of Kashmir University for ensuring smooth rollout of the National Education Policy 2020. In fact, this One Day Awareness Come Orientation Program is one of the many programs organized by the university to chalk out the implementation strategy of National Education Policy 2020. In fact, all the relevant stakeholders have made concerted efforts in this direction. I'm sure we all are aware that even the National Assessment and Accreditation Council is changing its manual as per the revised uh, NEP. NEP provisions. Well, to sum up the long-term implications of the policy, I would just quote our Honorable Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi, who asserted in his recent Independence Day speech on 15th August 2022 that national education policy will play an important role in making India a fully developed nation. Well, when we talk about the implementation of NEP 2020, it was never going to be easy as India has one of the largest and diverse education systems in the world. If you talk about universities, we have 1,100 universities and we have 43,000 colleges. And the diversity in the institutional structure of the colleges is huge. We have affiliated colleges, we have consummate colleges, we have autonomous colleges, and we have colleges with some special minority status, etc. Even the NEP policy document, we all have gone through it, acknowledges the challenge and clarifies that timely infusion of requisite resources, whether they be human or infrastructural and financial, either at the central level or at the state level, will be crucial for the satisfactory execution of the policy. As our Higher Education Secretary, Shri Sanjay Murthy, recently said at a major event that the implementation of the national education policy focuses on three pillars. And we as teachers know it very well. First, a curriculum which meets the industry's requirements. Second, a capable and competent faculty to deliver the content. And third, of course, to leverage technology to deliver it at the least cost. We'll be talking about all this in the first technical session. Howsoever simple it may sound, but the fact is that for executing any major policy decision, particularly in the field of education, proper awareness of the policy document is very important. And clarity about the purpose and the modus operandi of NEP 2020 is the prerequisite for its implementation. And we all know in this regard, a series of workshops and conferences were held under the ages of higher education department, which were attended by university officers, professors, principals, and faculty members. The very well conceived of two twin conferences by our worthy principal secretary at Jammu and Srinagar proved very useful, which were about preparedness and implementation, and they provided a platform for eminent educationists and academicians and policy makers to share their experiences and of course discuss the roadmap for effective implementation of NAP 2020. In fact, uh, it was Sir's brainchild to involve all convener admissions and coordinators of IQAC so that you know everybody uh, in the ladder was on the same page. Of course, the policy is very clear in many things. There we need not to think much how to do it, what to do, what not to do. But many things are there which probably are not very clear that with passage of time, with mutual cooperations and discussions, deliberations, I think we can find out ways and means to find out how to implement those aspects of the policy which probably there, wherein there is some ambiguity. And secondly, 
we can say this thing with uh, pleasure and pride that Jammu and Kashmir has been the uh, leading institution in the whole country. The deliberations, so much of deliberations, probably in other universities or only a few universities in India maybe, that this quantum of deliberations have taken to this extent as it has been here in Jammu and Kashmir. Of course, the higher education has undoubtedly played a pivotal role in all this. We are highly thankful to our principal secretary, Janab Rohit Kansalji, who has been, let me just admit this thing, the higher education is seeing a different type of uh, bureaucrat who listens to us, who has a lot of flexibility, and who takes people on board. I think these are the best qualities of a leader. So this leadership, we wish that undoubtedly this will help us a lot. And then one more thing which University of Kashmir has been witnessing in last one year, probably this is the another, another dimension of the same statement which I made here. During last one year, the close collaboration between the university and the principals, probably I have, I'm seeing it for the first time. Say we are ready with this scheme, we are now ready with the syllabus, this has been done in collab close collaboration with the principals of the colleges and we have come up with the complete curriculum, syllabus and the framework as well. Then let me admit this thing. Academic system in a university, it's different, of course it has to be different. Here we are mainly concerned with postgraduate education whereas in college it is different. Having said that, there are many things which we are not aware of about that ecosystem which is prevailing there in the colleges. Same may be true about the principals also. They may be not knowing each and everything of that e academic ecosystem which prevails here in the universities. By these coll close collaborations, I think this will facilitate better understanding of both these ecosystems so that we can launch this, we can implement this policy in a more successful manner. As we have seen that uh, repeatedly many things have been emphasized in the policy document. A socially conscious society, sustainable development, a cultured society. So these things, whenever we do any academic activity in universities, in colleges, or in our administrative offices, we must never lose focus of those things. Whether we are in the laboratory, whether we are in the playground, whether we are in the classroom. So we have to never lose focus of these things. Say sustainable development, sustainable growth, sustainability as all of us know, it doesn't mean only that we should be in a position to meet our own requirements. We should always be conscious of this thing to keep this thing in mind, how future generations will be in a position to meet their own requirements. So we have to we have never lose focus of this thing. This is what our new education policy has felt and uh, how it has come up with various strategies for implementing this particular policy. Therefore, the education policy of any nation plays a pivotal role in shaping its future towards what we are heading. India has been forecast to be one of the youngest countries in the world, gearing towards knowledge-based leadership, no doubt about it. Aligning this, the National Education Policy 2020, NEP 2020, aims to meet the changing edu educational requirements, innovation and research. Of course, lots uh, must have been uh, deliberated upon these uh, parameters so far. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, again, uh, review the things. The NEP 2020 is the first education policy of the 21st century, coming after 34 years of the previous national policy on education. When I say this, naturally, there will be some reservations, uh, there will be some, uh, you know, problems, there will be some challenges when we implement the new education policy because 
after 34 years we are changing it and uh, our teachers our students our society our parents have the different mindset of the old uh, you know education policy so naturally there'd be lots of challenges and hard work uh, we have to put in in order to make it very uh, successful this policy envisions the much needed reforms required in the education system it's a, st a step towards making india an equitable and vibrant knowledge society the comprehensive transformation through nep 2020 will bring about a paradigm shift in the way we educate our youth no doubt about it it will also impact the future generations of learners and create an enabling and uh, very vibrant uh, you know educational ecosystem for a new atmanirbhar bharat envisaged by the honorable prime minister of india shri narendra modi uh, university started implementation of nep by preparing the basic structure framework and the syllabi as we all know with the consultation with different principals with the various members uh, also the higher education and uh, things were streamlined for first two semesters there was some delay due to non availability of final guidelines from ugc university created a field uh, in the admission form for the registration number of academic bank of credit for undergraduate students which was one of the requirement we are in the process to prepare ourselves at pg level now for implementation of national education policy 2020 while seeing the key points nep 2020 aims to increase the gross enrollment ratio in higher education including vocational education from 26.3% in 2018 to 50% by 2035 and aims to add 3.5 crore new seats to higher education institution this will be great challenge for all of us and we have to prepare ourselves beforehand in less than 6 weeks this is the second such major seminar that we are holding the higher education department recently organized a seminar and our thanks are again due to university of kashmir not just for participation right down from the vice chancellor but also in implementing many of the decisions we took there so as i stand here today i think there's also a bit of pride because in many ways jammu and kashmir and within jammu and kashmir kashmir has probably become the first to implement the national education policy in so many of its times when you talk about the national education policy there are a couple of major stakeholders the higher education department is one stakeholder the colleges which are part of the higher education department are another major stakeholders they are either affiliating colleges affiliated colleges or constituent colleges of the two universities we have here the university of kashmir and the cluster university are again major stakeholders because they are either constituting universities or affiliating universities and of course our overarching national regulator which is the ugc aict as the case may be they are our regulatory stakeholders so this is one very good example of great synergistic symbiotic coordination between the various stakeholders which has enabled us to come together and take a first positive and definitive step towards the implementation of the national policy the colleges tailored their admission process the university came out with the curriculum on time the higher education department enabled you with a number of things and the ugc gave us a national curriculum the national curriculum as yet continues to be in the draft stage and which is why i am even more proud of all of you colleges across the country are struggling with admission tests cuet admission processes and you are reading about it in the rest of, in the newspapers but we have managed to admit students and we have also looking forward to starting classes as per the new curriculum <coughs> and as per the revised national education policy ahead 
of all the other colleges and schools in the rest of the country, for which all of you deserve a huge round of applause. Now, uh, Director Colleges made a very interesting observation. What are the pillars of the national education policy? The pillars of the national education policy, the first pillar is curriculum. The second pillar is our educational institutions which impart learning in this curriculum, whether they be schools, whether they be colleges, whether they be universities, whether they be affiliating universities, standalone universities, teaching universities. And the third is the virtual framework, the uh, technological framework which helps us to deliver this uh, national education policy. So one of the reasons why I wanted to come here and talk to you is to speak about how have we to move forward in the process of implementation. The university has taken one major step. It has given you a syllabus as per the revised credit scheme and as per the, as per the revised draft curriculum which has been unveiled by the UGC and we have to now take it forward. Let me begin by talking about the curriculum. Now, the curriculum which has been unveiled by the UGC has seen a couple of major changes. What are the major changes? It has split up the entire pedagogical process, the entire teaching learning process into a couple of buckets. And what are the buckets? The first bucket is the so-called major and minor program. Am I correct? The major and minor program. The second bucket is the so-called multidisciplinary program. The third bucket is the so-called skill enhancement courses and the fourth bucket is the so-called value enhancement. So now, now uh, in the major and the minor courses, the students will be taking up a particular set of subjects. In the multidisciplinary segment, they will be taking up another set of subjects which are not a part of their major and minor. In the ability enhancement courses, there will be, uh, or the skill enhancement courses, there will be the so-called communication courses as per the three language formula, the modern Indian languages. And then there are some other courses which include uh, technology, which includes understanding India. There are some skill courses, etc., etc. So the first task in front of all of you is to familiarize yourself thoroughly with, thoroughly with this curriculum, with the syllabus which has been formulated for this curriculum and make sure that your timetable is reoriented to this new curriculum. And also make sure that the teaching learning process is aligned to the manner in which this curriculum has to be taught. The university has prepared the syllabus. Now it is for you to take this curriculum forward in so far as the first two semesters are concerned. The, uh, uh, the, the national education policy also provides for multiple entry and exit and it provides the number of credits which has been which have to be additionally done it provides for certain skill courses and there is another additional thing that we are doing in uh, jammu and kashmir which all of you are aware of which is what we call the 12 plus 18 credit scheme and what is this 12 plus 18 credit scheme we are going to have 12 academic credits we are plus we are going to have 18 hands on credits making a total of 30 skill credits and these 30 skill credits will enable a learner to, to acquire what is called an NSDC certificate. Am I right? Am I right? So, however, now the acquisition of this NSDC certificate is in a sense not part of the formal curriculum and it is a voluntary activity. So, you will have to offer this as a voluntary activity to all the students. And once students opt for this voluntary activity, you will have to provide for A, academic instruction worth 12 credits. B, you will have to provide hands-on training for 18 credits. And what are the steps that you will have to be, that will have to be taken for this? Tying up with whatever industries or skill providing institutions are there in your respective areas so that the children can be given hands-on training. First, you will have to decide on the skill courses that you will provide. They may be horticulture courses, they may be agriculture courses, they may be electronics courses that you will have to de decide depending on the employ employment opportunities, depending on the uh, interest of the students, depending on the infrastructure you have in your respective institutions. Now, having decided on the courses, you will first have to offer the academic input for the courses. Then you will have to offer the hands-on training for these courses. And third, uh, uh, 3A. 3A, the university will have to make a provision for 
entering these 12 academic courses in its mark sheet so that the students get benefit of the additional 12 courses. But more importantly, you will have to talk to the NSDC to provide a testing mechanism for the 18 credits that you are giving so that when the child passes out, he gets an NSDC certificate. We would like to thank Shri Rohit Kansal Sai for conceding to our request for being part of this event. We also thank Professor Nilofar Khan, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor F.A. Masoodi, Director of Colleges, Registrar University of Kashmir, Control of Examination, University of Kashmir, Deans and some HODs of the departments, Director EMMRC, Principals of various co colleges and Admission Conveners, CBCS team and NEP team, including Professor S.M. Shafi, Professor Ashraf, Dr. Farzana, Professor Tahmina, Dr. Zubair, Dr. Yunis, volunteers from BWOC for conceptualizing the idea of, of this program. So this was it from the inaugural session. Now we break for tea.